I'm Martha Cowell and um, I work for Suffolk Wildlife Trust and at the moment I'm working on a harvest spice project. The project has been going for a year now and it's been incredibly successful. The project really came about because of the successes of the Suffolk Community Barn Owl project. What advisors have been doing is going around and advising landowners on putting up barn owl boxes and uh, it's led to a really big and excellent spread of barn owls into new areas. Simone Bullion, who is the, uh, one of the conservation advisors at Suffolk Wildlife Trust, had a little brainwave of using all of these owl pellets, which are now distributed across the whole of Suffolk, to analyse and look for harvest mouse remains. Um, and the reason that we really wanted to do this is because the harvest mouse has been made a biodiversity action plan species, which means that it has gone down or declined in numbers. So we thought, oh, okay, so if this is a Suffolk's a really good stronghold for barn owls, perhaps it's a good stronghold for harvest mice as well. So we thought, well, let's see what happens and uh, set about collecting the owl pellets from all the boxes. And uh, then we started to train volunteers to do the owl pellet analysis and uh, harvest mouse skulls started turning up in quite a few of the pellets. Uh, I mean, the first few times we found one, it was all excitement. Oh, uh, wow, we've got one, we've got one. Where's it from? I wonder what the habitat's like. And then suddenly they started turning up in more of the pellets until we realised that they were actually turning up in about 50% of all the sites, which is excellent and more than we sort of hoped for, really. So this is a barn owl pellet. This is probably about an average size for a pellet. Um, all this stuff on the outside is just where it's been sat on a dusty old floor and often they look a lot more black and shiny than that. Um, an owl pellet is actually the regurgitated remains of the owl's prey, so it's not poo, it's, um, they actually cough it up a bit like a hairball really in a cat. Um, so the reason that they do this is because they swallow each of their prey items whole. and. Uh, when they swallow it, it goes down into their stomach and the stomach acids are not actually as strong as some of the other, um, some other animals and it doesn't break down the bones at all, which is very useful for us because it means we can use them to identify everything they've been eating. Okay, so it probably took the best part of an hour, probably at least 40 minutes to dissect um, this pellet. Quite, quite a large pellet, the one I just dissected. Big pile of fur here, you can see that came out of the pellet. Um, and this is what we found in it. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different animals in one pellet. we're looking for here is uh, seven root holes in total. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, that's a harvest mouse. So this is the um, real gingery fur here, which says that we've got a harvest mouse in the pellet. project was to go out into the Suffolk countryside and to start looking for the harvest mouse nests. The way we did this was to go to the sites where we'd found the barn owl pellets. So um, for example if the barn owl was nesting in this barn um, the ideal place to look would be here which is absolutely fantastic habitat for the harvest mouse. Um, this long tussocky grass um, is exactly what they like. About three years growth is ideal for the harvest mouse because what they like is a really nice thick structure at the base 
which keeps out um, predators, but also probably one of the most important things, it keeps out the rain, um, because bad weather is one of the things that kills off most harvest mice. Um, one of the, the type of grass that we've been finding most nests in on this kind of arable landscape um, is this, which is Coxfoot. Um, and you can identify easily, even in winter, which is very handy because that's when we're looking for nests, because it has this, um, this piece here, which is why it's called a cock's foot because of this um, looking like the toe. Okay, so this um, is where I actually found a nest um, back in October. And uh, you can just see it here. It's hidden right in the grass. It's actually quite obvious now compared to in uh, summer when it would be completely hidden under the tussock. And if I just sort of hold the nest there behind my hand, it makes it a lot easier easier to see. So as you can see it's actually made out of the grass that's surrounding it. So they're actually made out of um, living grasses really and um, suspended in the grass. You can see the little entrance hole there. Um, in, when they're in use they actually don't have a hole to go in and out. The mouse will actually close the hole behind them to keep predators out. We think one of the reasons that harvest mice are probably doing well in Suffolk is that we've got quite a lot of habitat that's close to water, so next to creeks and estuaries and uh, a lot of quite wet sort of reed bed type habitat. And um, that kind of habitat is is generally quite undisturbed and the, the vegetation is quite thick and um, it gives a perfect breeding place for them to make their nests. <laughs> The only times that stacks like this are built now is when the straw is grown for thatching because it's um, a special type of straw which you need, to, a special longer type of straw which you need to uh, bring in and store like this to keep the strength in the straw. This is some reed that has been cut for thatching and brought in from Clay in North Norfolk and um, when it was opened and brought out, um, a harvest mouse actually ran out of it and sort of ran off into the, into the barn. So um, it shows that, um, yeah, harvest mice are nesting in these reed beds and they're actually being found in reed beds which are being managed and cut for thatching as well, which is nice to know that you can have the two together. Mm -hmm.